We're at it again. NZXE Canvas monitors feature more of what gamers want. The Canvas 1440p QHD offers 165 hertz refresh rate for the perfect balance between performance and resolution, while the 1080p Full HD Canvas delivers 240 hertz for a competitive edge. Both versions feature AMD FreeSync Premium, one millisecond response time, and OSD settings via cam, allowing for specific settings between games. To see the complete list of Canvas monitors and monitor mounts from NZXT, follow the link in the description below. It's amazing how fast information travels. Uh, after this video went live, Igor's lab did some digging. Uh, I'll put a link to this article down below, which is very informative. Um, pretty much identified the problem fully. So this is the adapter. If you haven't seen our first video, <clears throat> you could probably just not watch it because, spoiler alert, we weren't able to get the adapter to fail. But Igor had identified something that I suspected was happening in here but it's way worse than I suspected. So inside here, if you take a look, there are 12 power pins. So there's six power, 12 volt, six ground, and then the four extra pins, which makes it a 16 pin are the sideband. Sidebands are not important in this. But if you look, we've only got eight wires going into there. So when I looked at this, I said, there's gotta be some sort of a distribution block slash PCB solder joint, whatever, to turn these four wires into six wires on both sides. Now that's exactly what's happening in there. However, if we take a look at the photos right here from Igor's article, and again, highly, highly recommend you go down and look at this article and read it. The issue has not as much to do with the power draw of the card. It doesn't seem to have anything to do with the pin sizing, because here's the other thing too. You make a video like we did, and we get everybody and their mom reaching out saying, I'm an engineer, or I work for Microfit, or I do this, or I do that, and the problem is this. But every single person that's definitively saying what the problem is is counter, like being con contradiction, contradictory to someone else saying what the problem is, and they all are saying that they're the ones that know. But what Igor found through the help of Be Quiet is the fact that there's a very, very thin piece of foil metal, and they call it foil metal. When they say foil, I think of like aluminum foil, which is very thin and flimsy, but it's not. It's just a thin, flat piece of metal that the pins going into the GPU side are soldered to, and then the four power wires and the four ground wires are soldered to, or soldered to on, on their corresponding side, which are then insulated from each other to distribute the power across the pins. Now, investigating the failures it's always been noted that the outside pins are the ones that are, are the most burned. So if you look at this photo right here, this is one I put, I, I think I've showed now three or four photos since our initial discussion about these failing of folks that are showing their cards are either starting to melt or have completely melted or folks that had no idea they were even melting until the most recent one said he had no idea it was even melting until he took the plug out to kind of reroute the wire because he saw the videos and he was like, I should probably reroute this wire and not have a bend on it. And he pulls it out and he's got a melted cable or uh, not plug or pin, but like the uh, key, the plastic key was melted. And so he was like, what the heck? And didn't even notice it until he pulled it out. And that's where the danger comes in. <clears throat> so what Igor found was that it's not bending it up and down this way that's as much of a problem, which is what I was trying to do. It was side to side bending like this is why you're noticing the outside pins being the most melted because it would break off potentially or break, not break off, but it would create a crack or a break in the joint of where the wire meets that PCB flat PCB, no, I keep calling it PCB, it's not PCB, it's just a piece of metal. But it forces a wire to break off there, meaning now one of these are no longer connected. Here's the funny part. Because of the way that the sideband slash sense wires work, as long as this is seeing a ground, it will still tell the card, hey, 600 watts is available to you. But now you got one of these completely not plugged in, and the cards are gonna draw 450, anywhere between 300 watts, uh, or sorry, about 380 to 400 watts under like rasterization load, depending on your, res your, your resolution. And then as soon as you put it under any sort of a ray tracing load, the, the wattage goes up to over 400 watts. Now you're doing it with three wires, where even though that's still where 450 watts would be, you are now having a much higher resistance of power running through that foil piece, 
creating a temperature increase in the plug, leading to the failure. And what ends up looking like is happening is two of them are breaking, which is why you see the melted on both sides. Because if you're bending it this way, like that, you've got the radius pulling on the outside wire, and you've got a couple things happening here. If we look at this wire right here on the inside of the radius, as I bend it, you can see it sort of pushes it. But you can break a solder joint both by pulling and pushing. So somehow, I think what happens is some folks, the really badly burned ones, like the one that went kind of live on Reddit, might have actually broken both. Which means now you have up to 600 watts because the sense wires are still grounded and the ground is more than likely still good if that's not the one that broke. Now being drawn through two. And that level of heat coming through only two wires, two 14 gauge wires, there's a 14 gauge by the way, that is a scenario where the uh, temperature can increase hot enough to the, on the plugs. People started doing some crazy tests, like I think it was Galax put something like 1400 watts through one of these, through a load tester. So they, they plug in the cables and they're on a power supply load tester thing and they can just crank the watts and that thermal camera on it. And it hit like 100 C on the plug under those conditions and was just starting to melt. So if it takes 1400 watts to start to put enough heat through this to melt the wire, uh, the plug through all the cables, obviously it's not taking that much if the resistance is high enough with only two of these plugged in or three even because of a broken wire. So here's what I'm gonna do today. And, I, and Paul, uh, Paul's hardware also reached out to me because he's gonna try and recreate this himself too. Now that I've sort of sacrificed this, sacrificed this cable and I'm not gonna use it, I wanna cut it open and I wanna see for myself what it looks like in there. It's very difficult though to cut it open because this rubber is like molded on there. I still stand by what I said in my previous uh, video about you're pretty safe as long as you're using like, where is it, where is this guy right here? Like this is the Corsair replacement cable for the uh, 4090 adapter, the 12 volt high power. So what they're doing here is they have one wire per pin. So it's a dedicated ground wire for every pin found on the 12 pin side of the 16 pin plug. Six dedicated grounds, six dedicated 12 volts, and these are a heavier gauge. They're heavier gauge, they're not solid core, or like I thought they might have been. They are a heavy gauge, twisted or braided cable. So, or stranded cable. That's why this, this is a safe solution. It also got me thinking, because a lot of people asked, well, if this plug is so bad, remember, we were concerned about this part of the plug. This is not where our concern should be anymore. It's that part in between the cables and the 12 volt high power plug. People were going, what, what, 30 series had these plugs. All Founders Editions had these plugs. Why weren't they feeling? Well, if you look closely, NVIDIA did direct pin to, pin to wire. They all have a dedicated wire and pin going into them. Because this side of the plug is essentially the same. The keying might be different just to make sure you can't use it. Whatever, I digress. This was kind of like their introduction to the 12 volt high power plug. And then the 16 pin, the sideband thing is I think that was where Intel kind of came in and was like, hey, we should do something else with it. And that's, I think, where the sideband came in. These weren't failing, even with the 3090 Ti or the 3090, because of the fact that they were dedicated pin per, uh, per wire. So they took something that was working and then made it not work. All right, we got to cut into this bad boy. Okay, so there's the soldered deal in there. And as you can see, the one, two, three, four, soldered across this foil piece underneath it there. And that's where the six pins meet it on that side. The, the plate that they're soldered to is very thin. So the thinness of that plate carrying this much current increases the resistance and that much extra resistance or any resistance it equals heat. All right, so I wanna point something out as we're still load testing this and waiting for the temperature to stop rising. We're at 47.5 C on the wire just above the solder. But I wanna point something out. This right here is the broken solder pad that broke as he was trying to pull the rubber off. So that showed how delicate his was. We're noticing the solder on mine doesn't look as gross as this one. Like this is pretty gross. Like we'll put them side by side, maybe a close up before we break mine. But that's, mine doesn't look as bad. So his broke off, which means these three cables right here are now responsible for all six wires 
that need the voltage and the amps and, and all the current going through it. So I need to test this two ways. One, I need to break the wire off where it already wants to break, but leave the pad attached and see if there's any change and then break off the pad like he did. It's starting to look like the defect is in the build quality of the soldering uh, joints. This one's built properly, I would say. It's just what Igor found is that there's no room for mistakes if it's not, like if the solder's bad on it. Gosh, this is such a weird territory to be in because knowing that there are ones out there that could have this defect makes this a scary situation. But obviously they're not all like that, which is, it's like any recall, not every single one is that way. Like with the Asus motherboard backwards capacitor, ours wasn't, but uh, plenty of them were. And you can't negate and say, oh, it's not a problem because you couldn't recreate it. Obviously there's variants out there. Okay, so I have to do a little test first, just like this to make sure with wiggling around, I don't have it now bridging. I'm gonna test OCP or overcurrent protection in this. If it was somehow touching now ground in 12 volt, if I flip this switch on uh, and turn on the power supply, it should immediately trip it and it did not, so we're good. 60 degrees on the plug, and that's exactly as expected because let's, let's, let's rewind a second here. I showed you Igor's pad broke off, completely separating it from the bar. What I did essentially by cutting the wire and having the pad still be connected is just unplug it like you would not plugging in that, that fourth connector with my side cutters. Effectively doing nothing to the circuit in a negative way, with the exception of tricking it to go to 133% power limit, which where if I were to disconnect that wire because of the sense wire, I would only be limited to 450. So which is within spec of the card and three cables is within spec for 450. All right, so now the pad is completely removed. All right, so let's think about this a little bit here. 61.8 on the outside of the plug, which isn't that odd. Um, the transfer of heat from the pin through the plug plastic to the outside, that's gonna be a pretty terrible transfer of heat until it's eventually hot enough to start melting it. At the end of the day, Igor has already kind of made his assessment and I think it's a very fair one based on my limited knowledge and he knows a heck of a lot more than me about that sort of stuff. So I think uh, the problem's already been found. It's just proving to be harder to recreate it than I expected. All right, so lunch is about to be delivered and uh, it's been hovering around the same temperatures. 64.3, I think is the highest I saw it get and it sort of starts to come down. The next logical thing here would have been to cut another wire off. But the, but now we're getting into like super odd territory of, uh, yeah, that I mean, we're now force, forcing a failure. And like Igor knows exactly where the faults are in this. It's just, it still seems like it might be a very kind of a specific set of circumstances that have to be met to make the thing fail. Now, what I still have to do is pull it out and see, does everything look proper? Whoever I feel like NVIDIA sourced these plugs from, it seems to be very inconsistent, the level of quality you get with soldering uh, across the board. Let's cut it open. Well, that actually broke without me. <laughs> I was going up and down, and what happens if it goes sideways? And it went, look at that, clean break. Do I try it? I'm so worried about damaging the connector. Okay. It's so rushed at the hottest temp we've been at yet and we just crossed it. All right. Is there any sort of defamation of this plug? Nada, nothing at all. Now, that's not to say that this isn't a problem, but the universe does not want me to be able to recreate this. It's hot, it's not that hot. Maybe Paul had better luck. I don't know if Paul's actually trying to run his. I think he might've just cut it open to like a, take a look at the inside, but that's pretty much where we are gonna have to just end this subject. NVIDIA has requested that any of the cards, they've, they've told the AIBs as of this morning, they told them they any, any cards that have this problem, they want them for inspection, but they need to be looking at the plugs too, not just the card. In fact, Igor and Be Quiet even said they submitted their findings to NVIDIA and NVIDIA really should be, uh, they really should be listening and if you're running a custom cable, and so far there hasn't been any reports of custom cables uh, failing from the power supplies, except for, I think Be Quiet did have one, someone showed a wire, like the pin themselves depinned, which has happened to me a million times on both Molex and PCI Express, so I don't see that to be that odd here. But if you're running a cable that has one wire per pin, direct pin like this and not using NVIDIA's bridge solution thing, I would be perfectly confident running a 40 series and not having a problem. The problem is not the connector end. The problem is the way they built that monstrosity. That's it. We're done talking about this. Unless it somehow cures world hunger or cancer. I'm not, I have no more interest in talking about the plugs. 
just don't use the adapter.